This series of brief video glimpses of the wonderful Flinders Ranges of South Australia was made by Noel Leader some 20 years ago. A region of rugged mountain ranges and deep valleys, but all of it a virtual desert with almost no rainfall. All the videos are centred around the magnificent Flinders Ranges in the far north of South Australia. In the remote north of South Australia is a magnificent Sacred Canyon Aboriginal site. Our tourist guide, the canyon and its wonderful ancient history tourists. A truly memorable experience. You must bear in mind that that petroglyphic stuff was done before we had Aboriginals here. We had, it was done when we had the pre-Aboriginal race or the Legretoids that were the Tasmanian natives before the Macassans came down from the Indonesian archipelago mixed with the uh, Negretoids to produce the Aboriginal race we have today. The Aboriginal race doesn't do any petroglyphic work, they did all ochre work. Whereas these pre-Aboriginals did this carving work. We find these right across Australia. Now the circles are supposed to mean a group of people or uh, what we can ascertain is a group of people or a tribe of people. Now there's another tribe of people and what they've done is they've come together. And when they come together, they come together for two reasons basically. And that is to, um, to balance off the tribes. The tribal system and moiety system doesn't work unless you have the same number of males and females. Now some tribes end up with more females, some tribes with more males. So you come together once every now and again, maybe once every 10 years, to balance off, and that is what that's about. So they tell us, right? They're meeting together the two tribes. Now if we had another circle out here, that would mean that this group broke away and became a third tribe, all right? Because a moiety system doesn't work below a certain number and above a certain number, right? So you've got to keep it an even balance, and that's basically what they say this means. I don't know whether it does or not, right? But anyway, that's it. The white man, of course, white man, he comes here and uh, he wants to take photos of everything. So he ruins it all. White man comes up to him and he's got a camera. So he wants it, which has absolutely destroyed the peckings of these areas. And another bloke comes along and he gets a cold chisel and hammer and tries to take the whole slab away, but only takes a piece of it away, sticks it on his mantelpiece for a couple of weeks until his missus or mother gets sick of it and throws it in the bin. So we've lost it completely. But up here, we have a circle here with the bird footprint in it, uh, and possibly that is the motive of that particular moiety or group of people in that circle, right? And we have a lot of work over top of here. Now that's basically over the years what we've been told by the Aboriginals and told by the anthropologists it means. The latest theory is that it's just purely graffiti. That they just did it because in those days they had so much food, so much water, they didn't have to spend all their time hunting and gathering. They had time to while away and so like kids today painting on a wall or on a blackboard or, or an artist, they just did this sort of work to fill in their times and it has no real great significant meaning according to the latest theories. Okay, now as we go up the gorge we'll find the stuff everywhere. There used to be a big gallery up that slab there that's fallen down. There's uh, a lot of work on here. You can see people have tried to chisel it out. There's a lot of work, circles and things up there. Nothing really great. There's some more over there. No, again, nothing really great. There's some more work on this face here, quite a large circle there. Yeah. Yeah. No, when old Archie McKenzie first brought me here back in 1963, I think it was, these were quite distinctive compared to what they are now. And he tried to explain it all to me. What we call, um, it's, this is the ABC quartzite, mm -hmm. and you can see here it's what we call stress quartzite. You see by tremendous pressure, and it's become quite stressed. A bit like me, the government does that to me. <laughs> Here's your different lichens here. You've got your um, Caloparca citrinus, and we have this one here, which is Teleoschistes. 
But the Tilio schistes is not very bright orange at the moment because it's so dry and the bacteria is not doing too well. So that's it. That's all I can tell you. All that I've ever learned in all the years that I've been coming here. And that's probably all wrong too. But we come with museum groups. We've done a lot with the South Australian Museum and the curators, the different curators. So we get different aspects and different views of it. If nobody's got any questions, we better head back and uh, start having some morning tea. What you right, if you look at this, this, I believe, is a calendar, but I haven't proved it yet. You have 13 concentric circles there, very evenly marked all the way out. See that? Yeah, got you. So I reckon, and up there you've got a finger sticking up and a V. The moon could come in there at certain times, yep. and either using the finger or the V, cast a shadow down on there, which gives them the dates as it moves in and out through the seasons. Got you. That's my opinion, and we found this not only here, but everywhere we find one of these, there's always a rock like that out the other side. Yep. That gives you a finger, right? A pointer. Great stuff. And yeah. Boot Wingy, we found them over at Woodford, we found them here, we found them everywhere. Tremendous. And that's what we think they are. Oh, that's great, Quentin. That's really, uh, right. really impressive stuff, yeah. And this whole gorge is really something, isn't it? Yes, very impressive. It's in the ABC quartzite, a very hard weather-resistant quartzite. Uh, look, it's tilted look. almost vertical yep. and stressed with tremendous pressure. <coughs> that's really impressive. See the fault line down? Sure do. Sharp fault line. And that's yep. how the gorge is weathered out because it's the weakest point after it's fractured and moved. And absolutely vertically dipped. Sometimes that happens to me when I'm, I'm driving and, yeah, and yeah. you know, talking now. And then you lose the rhythm. Okay. Uh, the two sugars and milk. <laughs> oh, sorry, What's that? Come on. We're on the road again. Come on, Mum, get out of the road. Tandera Saddles, St Mary's Peak, Mount Sawtooth, the Sawtooth Range, Mount Abrupt. That's for a pound. Mm. Right. Mm. And now we're looking Heisen at the flank of it over there. And from the Heisen Range to the bunkers there, 35 miles across, 56 kilometres. Those rocks match those rocks over there, so you can imagine how high it would have been. 30, the domes are weathered away, leaving just the hollow behind, the valley. Behind.